you know, Harianto, given the work that we do, you know, mm. writing and presenting this show, do you think job sharing is something that's possible for us? I think if we are ready to split the presenting days, uh, so for example, this week I do three days and then you do two, mm. and then next week I do uh, two and then you do two, three, then I think, yeah, we are ready for that. Something for our bosses to consider as well. <laughs> well, talking about this, because the GBS announced yesterday mm. that it will introduce a formal job sharing scheme to support employees who need more flexible work arrangements. Have a look. In the past, you know, many companies have part-time work. So the job is just, you know, limited to the specific uh, job scope for a part-time. But this is a full-time job that you can share with two employees. And we are able to do that also learning from, you know, uh, the COVID experience where team A and team B, we can hand over to each other very seamlessly. On top of that, also, you know, today's technology make it very easy as well that you can hand over, you know, the job to the next person that is taking over. According to DBS, under the scheme, two employees will share the responsibilities of one full-time role. Staff under the scheme will retain all existing medical benefits in full and continue to be covered under the bank's insurance plans. At the same time, the bank will also introduce more part-time work arrangements and give all employees flexibility to work remotely up to 40% of their time at work. Now here to weigh in is the Executive Director of the Singapore Human Resources Institute, Elvin Go. Hi Elvin. Elvin, first off, what's your view on DBS's voluntary job sharing scheme? What are the benefits and challenges of such a scheme for the employee and company? Right. Thanks for inviting me onto the show. And I think number one that comes to mind is that rather than an outright retrenchment exercise that DBS is actually undertaking itself with the job sharing scheme. The organization is then able to perhaps, you know, retain two valued employees. Uh, and also at the same time, you know, they gain two sets of everything, the enthusiasm and the creativity. You know, if done properly, it also increases accountability as employees are also accountable to each other. And this could actually lead to a more cohesive work environment where they must plan on the work itself agree upon where the hands-off are supposed to be, communicate constantly, and the quality of work is either maintained or even raised to some extent. However, on the other hand itself, some of the outright challenges of the uh, job sharing scheme is that uh, you're dealing with two sets of people, uh, which they ha might have different viewpoints, uh, different work styles, and requires the job sharing partners themselves to be equally competent in the area of the shared work, right? And other possible challenges, if not executed correctly, it might be confusing for customers and internal stakeholders, and perhaps maybe at the end of the day, a uh, blame culture might arise. Right. Well, Elvin, um, as of June last year, only 1.3% of companies here in Singapore have offered job sharing opportunities. Your institute's president said job sharing is not very common among Singapore companies. Why is this so, you think? I think the first few points that come to mind is that the awareness of such a scheme that's availability and the lack of know-how in terms of actually implementing it right here in Singapore I suppose the understanding of how to implement and as well execute the job sharing scheme is a challenge amongst organizations it also does not help if the first part of call for most organizations during this period of uh, economic uncertainty is to actually go straight for the reduction of their manpower that's what we have seen over the retrenchment exercises conducted thus far Right. So the mental shift from having a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is important to adopt new ways of actually retaining their uh, the greater success which their employees itself and also share the workload out. Right. Do you then think uh, DBS will pave the way for more companies to jump on the bandwagon? You know, honestly, I really applaud DBS or what they have done by coming up with this scheme itself. You know, but I do also want to throw a cautionary note to companies who are thinking of embarking on this initiative. I think the downside of not implementing a job sharing scheme correctly and including, a, uh, and this also includes failures of business leaders to address uh, TV issues in a timely manner could create a blame culture in the long run, right? And also on top of that, uh, the businesses itself must be matured enough to actually want to adopt a job sharing scheme. Well, let's set everything in context, uh, Elvin. When it comes to flexible work arrangements, what other unique or creative schemes do you know of that have been implemented in workplaces around Asia and the rest of the world as well? 
I think you know, the first few ideas that come to mind that what I personally see personally seen around the world is that number one, operational issues aside, right? Some other creative ways includes you know unlimited vacation, something that Netflix and LinkedIn have actually adopted back about five years ago. You know, it's unlimited vacation, take what you need type of policy. That's number one. The other two that actually comes to mind is actually results only work environment or short form ROV for short, whereby there's a combination of flexible time flexible time off and as well as flexible location when the focus is really on just on the output itself, right? Uh, and these are the two more um, schemes that are also available out there in the workplace itself. And organizations have also adopted that as well in the past. Right. And have you seen these schemes uh, being applied to Singapore, especially, you know, bearing in mind that the work culture here is rather conventional, like you have to be physically at the office to show that you're working. Mm. Yeah, I think these schemes are, are applicable to Singapore uh, in the context here as well, despite uh, the conventional wisdom and thinking that, you know, people, employees needs to be uh, at, at the workplace and so forth. So, so as I said earlier, on, we really need to move the mindset from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And business leaders are, and should be better informed and uh, execution, if execution plans are clearer itself, these schemes are really implementable. And at the end of the day, it also really depends on the maturity level of the organization. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about maturity, I'm really referring to the infrastructure to support these schemes. You know, the workforce composition and competencies of the workforce is also important. Uh, business and operation requirements and needs must be also be met, uh, coupled with clear policies and procedures to guide employees and as well employers on what these schemes uh, and how these schemes could actually benefit their organizations uh, during this period of time. Right, great insights there, Elvin. Thank you so much for making time for us. We've been speaking to Elvin Go, Executive Director at the Singapore Human Resources Institute. Now, we want to hear your thoughts about job sharing and other flexible work arrangements, so leave your comments below.